Hi, my name is Janet Skinner. Sometimes in life we need a purpose to continue. And back in the early 1990s, I was looking for a reason to live, if you like. Um, just happened by accident one day that I saw that Bung Station, which is in Queensland, was going to be demolished and replaced. So I decided to paint it. And during the 1990s, I painted 104 railway scenes and that kept me going. As I sat on the platform and railway sidings, old people would come over and speak to me and tell me about life in the good old days. These were elderly people. It transpired that many of them were born in the early 1900s. I wrote down their names and phone numbers and I went back and interviewed them. There's a series of some 35 railway tapes that I'm making of the interviews that I recorded in New South Wales and Queensland. I'm not a journalist. I've got no background training in interviewing. And I really hope you enjoy these films. Um, I hope they bring laughter to many and insight into as what life used to be like. And please bear with me. I had fun doing them and I hope you have fun listening to them. Thank you so much. Have you got a middle name, John? James. James. John James. James. Yeah. And what was your surname? Ellington. E double L E R. Yeah. I N G T O N. All right. And what year were you born? 1919. 1919. Okay. Was you born in Australia? Born at Stone. Well, at Stone. Um, John, um, have your, with your mum and dad connected with the railway at all? My father worked on the railway the majority of his life in, after coming to Australia in 1914. Right. I don't know the year that he started, but I would say I've been in the early, he was early 20s possibly, right. because he, uh, he worked in Sydney for a little bit, then he went to the country areas, which was... Uh, for the railway, which was in that yeah. With the, yes, on the station as an assistant station master, for mm -hmm. he started portering first off, and assistant station master, and then in, uh, he was down near Albury, which was Gerudgery, which uh, 1928, uh, my parents were both English. We went to England on a trip. That was the first opportunity they had after coming here in 1914. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, then Dad's people were at Harrow in London, and my uh, mum's parents were out in the Sandringham house where their grandfather actually um, did the farming all around the property around Sandingham House. Mm. Oh, that was 1928. Mm. Uh, Dad, Dad then had to take, uh, take more or less, not resign from the railway, but take leave for six months and then be prepared to go back to a posi whatever position was available within the state when he returned. And that, uh, that work out to be Corindai, mm -hmm. which is on the northern line. Uh, Corindai, he worked at like the station, the assistant station master. Well, later, later than that, oh, I was, I'd be only nine then. Mm -hmm. Then I, I turned nine in England. Well, then uh, I'd be only for, say, three years, two and a half, three years, uh, Corindai, 
and we went to Ares Creek, where I was 11 then, uh, schooling there till first year. The uh, first year we did the first year high at Ares Creek, and the father then was uh, working in South Box really in the shunting yards, and then went on the relief, relieving staff with the railways. We took him anywhere from Musselbrook up to the border of Queensland and out in the northwest line to Narrabi Moor Eway. And uh, he'd be anywhere for a week or a few days and uh, till he, then he was appointed to a small station, more station near Tamworth called Atunga. Well, there he, uh, A double T U N G A. It's only a matter of, say, 13, 13, 15 miles from Tamworth itself, but working in Wales still. So, uh, well, when he shifted away, went to there, I was having to pay my own board then out of my own pocket, so I went on the relieving staff as a junior station assistant. What year did you join the railway? Uh, <coughs> About 1934, and I started off in the locomotive uh, at Wirris Creek as a call boy. That was uh, going out for the day or night, uh, night time mainly for calling them an hour before their shift started, or during the day advising them of their time of their next shift and the train and where it was going to, so they knew to whether to take a enough food for a couple of days or were they just going, say, to uh, Musselbrook and returning that same day. Mm -hmm. Well, that was, that was the first job. Well, then my friend, uh, my mate at school, his dad was with the, tra the traffic department, that's the running of the trains, and uh, he got me to put in, he said that look, you've got no advancement where I was in the locomotive, but I could get the advancement in the traffic department. And uh, then I went on to the station work, telegraph officers, opening and shutting the crossing gates. This is it, where it's creek? Or anywhere, like wherever then, on the relieving staff. But my home station then was Tamworth. I put the main station that you would be working at for the persons there having holidays, that would be made your home station. While you worked there, you didn't get any ex uh, expenses, your board paid. But if you were leaving away from there, well, it was reasonably profitable. You, you didn't want out of pocket by relieving at other stations. And uh, any time, any there any different job, whether it's like working on the gates or cleaning the windows and the train, doing parcel work, or even at one job was uh, making up beds in the sleeping cars. <laughs> so I was a bit of a mixture in that. Mm -hmm. that I even remember I did, possibly on the quiet, I did short sheet a couple mm -hmm. of beds one night. I was a bit <laughs> crank. I was a bit cranky, and I did. But I heard nothing of it. I could have got held over the coals with that lot. And um, did you then um, um, work at Armadale or um, while you was? Well, I suppose starting from the border, I suppose to be Tenterfield, Glenninus, Armadale, Tamworth, and West Tamworth quite a bit. West Tamworth as well because it was involved in the shunting yards and I'd been employed over there taking the a particulars of a good train being made up all the, the number of the number of the goods truck and what it had in it where it was going to and weight etc so when the, when it was completely made that train made up I could give them a calculation of the total tonnage so the driver and the guard knew they weren't 
trying to uh, convey too much for that one locomotive. Mm. And uh, what was your main? What was the main? Was it the current? What was the main? Oh, any, any goods. Well, it could be uh, could be livestock, could be wheat, like uh, wheat from silos. Mm. Uh, could have been. Mm. Yeah, like any commodities, like from the northern and north northwestern New South Wales, which I could have been lime uh, from near Tamworth was a a big uh, rock quarry, and the rock from there used to go down to the smelting works at Newcastle. Well, there'd be a whole train load of that at times. Well, that had to be shunted in with other stuff at West Tamworth to make up these, uh, tra- make the trains. Well, the stuff might be going north uh, to Armadale or up to the border and transshipped into Queensland even. But the majority of it back towards uh, Sydney, or Sydney Way. But uh, stock nights, stock nights were a headache because the stock, uh, more so the cattle, if they one fell down, that train couldn't proceed anymore. They'd have a drover with them, and if, if per chance some stock were down, they'd be trampled to death. Otherwise, if they didn't do something about it, so that train then must be had to go into a siding, and the drover with them, he would then with big poles try and lift the lift the beast up, and then. The train can proceed, it might be another hour or two hours late then. Mm. So you couldn't guarantee the actual running time. Well, that's where my father was involved, say at Narrabai, where the stock coming from different lines and trains are all ready to go. And stock them, sheep weren't so bad, they'd be able to you know, do yeah. that at short, mm. short notice with it. But with just a long pole, I poke away into the into the goods truck and help the beast to get up. Mm. Otherwise, they would suffocate. Mm. But then on other stations, such uh, smaller stations such as uh, what the, not Walbrook, uh, Walker Road, which is between Tamworth and Armadale. How do you spell that? W A L C H A Walker Road, and there yeah. one. A uh, certain number of days of the week, all the signals uh, away from the station, might be, a, might be a kilometre or so out, they had to be serviced. And I'd go there with a, with a uh, tricycle, on the, running on the rails, a tricycle, and uh, pick, pick up and chain, take 20 fully uh, kerosene oiled up, uh, lamps for the signals, uh, take say 20 out and replace them once a week and uh, bring those others back, clean them up, service them, oil them and up, ready to go out the next week, etc. In the same the other direction of the station. Mm. You'd have the signals the other end of the station. Right, well that's, that's quite a bit of work, but it's Somebody had to do it, and the junior was the one who had to do these sort of jobs. Mm-hmm. Not about the weather. You didn't because it's raining today. Well, they didn't need to be done till tomorrow. They had to be done, otherwise they'd run out of run out of the kerosene. Mm-hmm. 